Bullet Fun Hustler here. What is going on, peeps of YouTube? A little bit different of a show today. We're going to go through a live garage sale haul that I picked up yesterday, right? So a lot of this stuff is going to be hitting the market tonight all the way, you know, starting today, basically. So I really couldn't proceed forward until I made this video. Anyway, I want to make sure you guys can hear me because I'm trying on a different mic that's on my camera right now. That way I don't have to have the headset on. Um, the headset gets kind of in the way when I do these kind of hauls because usually I do these kind of hauls for the green room. But I do want to do one of these hauls uh, for you guys right here. I did not film yesterday, all right, um, to do like a ride along. And those things get very, very time intensive. It's a lot of editing. Um, I decided just to go hustling in the morning, right, with my brother. And um, it was really, really cold. So the first thing, uh, the first part of the business, it's cold in this garage. The first part of the business is, can you guys hear me? That is very important. I'm pretty sure you guys can hear me. I mean, so, sorry, I'm pretty sure you guys can see me. I just don't know if you guys can hear me. So um, if you can hear me back here too, that's good. But we're trying to get the uh, mic on my camera, which is an external camera, to uh, pick up everything. So hopefully we're good. Um, yeah, I see a comment in the feed right now from Sean Patrick. It's been so long since I've been to a garage sale. I miss having the chance to negotiate with other people. Um, yesterday, I was at the first garage sale, and it was 18 degrees in the morning. 18. So, I mean, that is definitely, in my book, that's cold. I don't know about in your book, but for Austin, Texas, that's really, really cold. So, anyway, <laughs> um, today there's like a high of 50, like nothing crazy. But, uh, yeah, 18 degrees, I was... I didn't bring any gloves with me. That was the biggest mistake because my hands were freezing within five minutes of the first garage sale. So what did I find at the first garage sale? Let's look at that right now. Um, one of the finds was this right here. This is a whoa, this is a Gore-Tex Alpine Stars. This is actually the second pair of boots I've found in the past three weeks that are Gore-Tex Alpine Stars motorcycle riding boots. More specifically, they're probably used for touring type stuff, long distance um, on bikes that leave the rider being more upright, right? Those kind of bikes that have uh, saddlebags or cases on the side, um, could even be enduro type bikes. But either way, these are, you know, more long distance type stuff. They're not the, ra the super racing type, like you see the people leaning like MotoGP style, but these are more touring. The MotoGP style are gonna have a lot more plastic pieces on here, hinges, that kind of stuff. Um, this one right here is basically more touring, all leather Gore-Tex, which is important because when you're touring across the USA or going long distance, it might rain, right? And you don't want your boots to, uh, uh, you don't want wa you don't want water to permeate through your boots. So, anyway, that's right there. That was ten bucks, and I'm probably thinking I can get this sold for about sixty to eighty bucks right here. So that was a good buy, for sure. But then the box over here. Um, the other thing from that garage sale, let's see if I can find it, is right here. I don't, believe we're, I don't believe we're restricted on these yet. I could be mistaken, but either way, it was a great deal. A PS2 Slim Black, okay? The, sl the slim ones on uh, FBA. I was going to do that right before um, I got to doing this show. I was going to re-look at FBA because I looked at it in the car yesterday. It was so cold that I, I actually forgot the data that I saw on the screen. So I don't think I was restricted. Um, but yeah, got, you need the power cord. You need the audio video. Uh, there could be a really good game inside. Probably no, there won't be, but uh, there could be. Uh, one controller. Um, this controller also will have um, kind of like haptic feedback, so it, might, it should shake. Um, but it is a PlayStation 2 Slim, so really important to have uh, PS2 Slim. Every now and then you'll find them with the memory cards, but this one doesn't have one. Not a huge deal. Uh, when I do put it on FBA, I'm going to be targeting somewhere around the uh, 80 to about $95 mark um, based upon completeness and uh, you know, usually these PS2 Slims um, will work. So I haven't ever come across a PS2 Slim that doesn't work. But the normal PS2, I've come across a bazillion of those that don't work. So anywhere, PS2 Slim right here. It's the really small PS2. Can you guys still hear me? Let's just make sure, okay? Because I am kind of pulling back away from the camera. And I'm doing it this way because the headset thing with the long cord is really annoying when I do this kind of haul stuff for the green room. So... Um, anyway, I, I definitely wanted to make a haul video for you guys and to test the waters to see if you guys like it. Um, it's a little bit different of a format. I know you guys probably want to ride along, but just understand that my time is getting so valuable lately that, you know, doing a ride along, filming all that kind of stuff, then editing it for an hour and a half to two hours, it is getting very, very time consuming. So if you do like this format as well, um, hit the like button. Very, very important. Okay. 
So that's from the first garage sale. I was freezing so hard, I could not believe. It reminded me of going snowboarding and uh, taking off your gloves for a second, you know, to adjust something on your goggles, and then all of a sudden your, your hands are just like frozen. So anyway, <laughs> we got some people in the house here. We got Outdoor Wrangler, Dan Mack, um, Jason Kreider, what's up, Pensacola Picker, 44 live viewers, cool. Um, we got Attilai, Brandon, Hardesty, what's up, Hardesty? John Hardesty is the most recent winner of the green room mvp of this month by the way which is very awesome um an mvp is our most valuable kind of person in the room for the month and we award them 25 bucks so he won um december 2016 so that was really good anyway um all right so let me make sure i get the next stuff together here because the next place that i hustled with my brother was a garage sale where we found a lot of things for 40 bucks okay now it's going to take a while to get through all the learning here, but um, I'll just show you what I bought for 40 bucks, and I need you guys to help me maybe price out a couple things, okay? So the very first thing that was in the $40 pile, all right, was this. There were a lot of stuff. I don't know if this guy was cleaning out a locker, but it was done. This sale, like, they had, like, four cars, and they kind of just went to a random um, back street in Austin, Texas on the south part of town. And then they just start throwing everything on the ground. So I found this in the pile, right? This is a Bancroft military hat. All right. Very interesting. I always pop on these because if they don't do well on eBay, which the last ones that I messed with always do well on eBay, but I can put them in my booth too. This one's in good condition. There's no stitching that's all messed up or anything. I think it's a pretty decent hat. Um, what do you guys think on this? This is where I need your help is on this one right here. What's up, Autism Pete? Good to see you. Uh, what's up, Sherwin? Good to see you too. So what do you guys think on that right there? I'm going to go grab the other thing from inside. I just realized there's another thing inside the house that I haven't brought out here. Give me one second. Okay, so yeah, I do have it now. Um, all right, so from that garage sale as well, so Outdoor Wrangler says 80 bucks. That's pretty good. Um, really nice. Jim Jones, thank you for that comment, by the way. There's going to be a lot of content going to that other channel, my workout channel, like effective next week, a lot of it. So uh, what do you guys think? 80 bucks, really? That, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, I might not take this to the booth, and that's in that case. What do you guys think? Someone else outside of Outdoor Wrangler, what do you guys think about this one? Right, this was part of a $40 lot, okay? This was one of the things I found. Um, when I say I, it's me and E-Money, and we're gonna split some of this stuff, of course. Uh, we have a Sony, not micro cassette, all right, but uh, solid state uh, storage type uh, recorder, okay? Solid state meaning the, the memory's in here, right? And it's fixed, so you can't upgrade it or whatever. It's probably a two gig, if I'm not mistaken, something like that. It's an ICD B120. We always pick these things up. We even pick up the micro cassette ones a lot too. Um, average selling price for a micro cassette recorder in my FBA uh, store, somewhere between 40 and 60. Like usually it's around 40 and 60. So this it doesn't really matter if it's an Olympus, a Sony, a Panasonic, it just doesn't matter. But usually 40, 60. Now these guys can sometimes be between 40, 60, but every now and then if you find some of the colored Sony ones, you can get up to about 80, sometimes 100. So there we go. It's a solid state recording. Um, my, it's a solid state recording recorder. So you just pop this down when someone's making a talk or a speech somewhere, and then you can go go around and just, uh, you know, it, it's instant, right? You don't have to go rewind. You can go to different uh, chapters or different folders in your thing. Um, it's a very instant type thing. So um, we got some other things coming in here. We got some other people helping me with this one. Um, a solid black one sold for 75 on eBay. Okay, that's good. Awesome. So there's an interesting question here, Hustle and Grow. What's going on, everyone? I'm taking photos and eating Doritos. So what are you guys doing out there right now? Are you guys watching football? Are you guys uh, just chilling? Are you guys watching mobile? You know, I just want to know what you guys are doing right now. I'm clearly in a garage that's probably 45 degrees, and um, you know, I'm about to put some of this stuff to market. In fact, I'm going to the antique booth directly after the show, and uh, that's that's one of the primary reasons I'm doing the show right now is because there is a, there is one really good thing down there that I like that's going to the booth right now. So I wanted to show it to you guys. 
Um, we got 20 likes as well. Thank you so much. 54 viewers, 20 likes. That's pretty good. All right. So another thing that we found there, I don't know if this is actually very expensive, but a Chicago cutlery um, knife, brand new, sitting right there. It's a Santoku Kuto Santoku. It's a seven inch. A lifetime guaranteed blade. I don't think this is really worth too much, but you guys tell me a Chicago knife. Emerson E-Money really wanted this. Don't know why, but he really wanted it. So that there. Military hat is going out of the picture now. People are listing on eBay, watching the Steelers game. It's not really a game, is it? Um, I was watching some of that too. Um, right here. This is skills. Anything with skills is pretty interesting. I kind of like it. Uh, but it's more of like a local thing, except when you find these small things. This is, um, anytime you see skills stuff, by the way, skills, it's like lower grade training stuff for people that want to do things different than like weightlifting, right? But it's still very active type stuff. So you might find speed ladders, you might find um, jump ropes, you might find this, which is their version of TRX bands, which are uh, bands that you put from a very high point and you can do like, you know, these movements like that. You can adjust them. You can put your feet through them, your ankles through them, and you can do ab stuff. Um, but yeah, skills basically made their version of it. I can kind of take out some of it, but it's kind of annoying to put back into here. You can kind of see it's brand new and the, the manuals with it and everything. It looks like this, right? And you put it onto a high point, usually some sort of a, um, you just need a very, very sturdy kind of chin up bar to start mounting this and then you can actually do flies you can do you know back pulls tricep extension things uh, and, and it you know uses your own body weight right depending on the angle that you lean at um, the harder the exercise can usually become so we got one of those that was in the 40 dollar pile um i'm probably going to use this so don't know what the resale is but i wanted it for myself Testing, testing, one, two, three, making sure the sound's still good. So some of my posse out there, 57 viewers, I want you to help me out. Let me know if it sounds still pretty good. Um, Corvide says 20 or 30 on the knife. Thank you so much, Corvide65. I really appreciate that. Um, okay, so let's take a look. Dude, I was about to walk away from that $40 lot, and I found – this is another thing I found in the $40 lot, but this was after I did the lot and actually spent an extra like dollar or two on this. So really 43 bucks. Check this out. I like this a lot. What do you guys think of this? Okay. This is an actual, all right, military bag that says top secret on there. I think it might be World War II, but it is pretty rad. I mean, it's very neat looking. I like it. It's almost Swiss looking, but at some point it might have been a shoulder bag, right? But it looks like it's tied off here because it broke. Got those leather accents, which is very kind of key. You can see right here and just the fact that it says top secret isn't this like super awesome oh my siri is going off because i said secret and so i thought i said siri um so yeah there it was just a typical little shoulder kind of thing but the fact that it says that i think is really interesting so i'm going to probably throw this one on ebay so what do you guys think i mean it's small enough to put into a padded you know poly just like that and then I can get this out to somebody in the USA. Don't know if this is going to be a $30 item, a $50 item. It's just interesting. And it's definitely, definitely old. So, all right. So there we go with that one. I have a lot of stuff to show you guys. So hopefully you guys are into learning some things here. I know. That's what I'm saying. Thrifty flip side. That's a really interesting uh, bag. Post. Okay. So use the keyword post apocalyptic as a keyword. That's pretty good. Thank you so much. Wicked Picker. Um, if you want to know a little bit more about the Green Room, go to greenroomuniversity.com. And that should give you enough information right there. And plus, I'm pretty sure we have some Green Roomers here in the feed. So you can ask them whatever you want. But if I, if I have some members of my group in this feed right now, go ahead and tell them what is the Green Room all about. I don't want to make this show like a sell or a hard sell or anything like that. I want to make it a show that's educational so you guys can see this haul so I can actually go to the antique booth and get some of my day done here. But uh, I'll leave it up to my members, right? And there's no bias here. They can tell you whatever they want. If they, if they, if they dislike the room, they'll tell you. If they love it, they'll tell you as well. Okay, but take a look in the comment feed. I'm pretty sure they'll help you out. Okay, um, part of the $40 haul. I like this kind of stuff because this really belongs in my booth. Check this out. It's a vest. I didn't even try it on. So I'm going to try it on for the very first time. This looks like a large. What's well, an extra large. Ooh, this could fit me. All right, so let's take a look. Let's see what this feels like. I just threw it in the pile. 
because when you hustle with me, like I use, I do a lot of like quick, quick picks and quick buying. So I don't sit there for, you know, extended periods of time on my phone or whatever. I can just trust my hunches, trust my instinct. And I think that's what makes me a good hustler, right? I don't sit there and get caught up in like, oh, I might piss away a dollar or two or five bucks. Um, I sit there and I go, let me get the best pile I can for, you know, whatever. And let's get the hell out of here. So this is what it looks like. It's definitely a retro vest in my booth. This is probably bring somewhere between 30 and 40 bucks right now. Like this is the time to sell it. Um, I wouldn't put this on eBay. Um, but in the booth, it, this is pretty nice. It's a little on the short side, right? What do you guys think? It's definitely short. And I know it doesn't shrink because it's nylon, right? 70s vintage. This is super awesome. Man, I like it. I just wish it was a little longer. What do you guys think? Here, this is my uh, my hoodie right here. All right, so I got my O'Neill hoodie on. Look at how short this thing is. Holy crap. It's the first time I've ever put this thing on. I can't. I don't know if I can keep this. It's gonna look so goofy. I like it though. I don't know. You know, the the thing about hustling, guys, is whatever you keep. Okay, whatever you keep out there from your piles or your finds or your thrift store runs, make sure that you're willing to buy it for what it could sell for. So important, right? That's the reality of life. Is that if you can sell it for forty bucks, like right now, I always ask myself this. Am I willing to spend 30 or 40 bucks for this right now in this moment? And I go, you know what? No, I'm not because I have like five other vests in the other room that are North Face, Patagonia, Arcteryx. I have good stuff, right? I like this. It's stylish. It's very neat looking, but I'm not in that. I'm not in that point in my life right now where I want to just stand out a whole lot and like be all fashionable. I'm just not in that point in my life. Like, um, I would rather take that 30 or 40 bucks and spend it on my business. And uh, I definitely have a new endeavor coming out very soon that people in the green room kind of got a hint about a couple days ago. Um, and I'll just kind of tell you guys right now, like kind of under the radar, but I am building a brand. Like I'm building a private label brand and I'll leave it at that. And it's not the type that's going to go on Amazon. It's like a real, real brand. So anyway, um, yeah, that's what I'm trying to think. I'm, I mean, that's not, that's my thought process right now. It's like the 40 bucks going to a vest and just sitting there in a vest that's on a hanger is not a good use of my money right now. So anyway, nice vest. I like it a lot. Usually vests like this that I pick up at garage sales will have some sort of like stain or tear. I mean, this thing is awesome. This is the first time I'm actually looking at it. Like remember, I picked it just like that. Like in one second, I just took it from a pile, put it in my other pile. And when you're dealing with garage sales and piles, the best thing to do is don't ever go up to the person like, okay, how much for this? Um, you know, like three bucks. Okay, let me put them on my pile. That's the wrong thing to do. You want to make your pile and tell the person, look, I see a lot of good things here. You got a great eye. Give them a compliment, right? And then go, I want to make a pile and let's just discuss it at the end. And trust me, they're always going to be like, yeah, that's cool. Because they're going to be hit from all angles with questions from other people that are doing it the wrong way. You just do it the right way, right? You just make a pile, okay? And you throw it somewhere else. But that's my pile right there. I'm putting everything in that pile and we'll make a deal later. That's the way you do it. It's the art of bundling. It's the same thing that Frank on American Pickers is notorious for. You want to make bundles, okay? Very important. And you want to catch them off guard at the very end, okay? You want to catch them at the very end when your pile is as big as possible, where things are maybe hidden in the pile. And uh, they look, you know, a lot of times if they're really like pressed for time, they'll look at the pile and be like, you know, 50 bucks. That's what the guy said on our pile. And I sat there with the e-money and we're really good at this, right? We sit there and we're like, hmm, I would still have bought it for 50 bucks. But, you know, I'm sitting there, we go, hmm, we sit there and we ponder and e-money goes, he's real good at it too. He's like, oh, I don't know if I want it that bad. That's what he says, but I know he does. And um, the guy goes, well, just anything. He goes, 40 bucks. And I was like, all right. You know, I don't want to sit there and go, I'll give you 20 because that's just so insulting. But uh, 40 bucks is good with me. So that was part of the pile right there. If I'm speaking too fast for you guys, let me know. It is cold in this garage, and I realize that I might be speaking a little too quickly. So anyway. Um, all right. Have some of his older videos. He drops off and he shows his booth. Okay. Yeah, someone might be asking... Um, about the booth. I do have a booth in the antique mall. I don't own the antique mall, but I do rent the booth and the booth pays. I can price anything any way I want. The antique mall is run by the people in the front desk. And so if you can imagine a big kind of tin building, you walk in, there's a huge head cashier place that usually has four people on staff. And um, then you go either left or right. And there's like booths in every direction. Those booths are rented by people like me. And I pay rent and I pay commission 
when the person, um, you know, when someone goes around this antique mall, they can pick from any booth they want. They look at the booth tag and the booth tag is what's really important because when they check out the, you know, they basically at the front to the cashier takes the money and goes, okay, this goes to booth 199, this goes to booth 215. And that's how they cut out checks. But in order to do that in the front, it's 10% commission. Like I have to surrender 10% of my sales price to them. But either way, I can. it's a great avenue. It's like a localized FBA. It's where I have a storage facility literally for antique vintage retro that's like five miles from my house. That's the way I look at it. If I'm going to store something that's old and I don't even know if I want to get around to it, like maybe it's this vest, right? I'm like, I don't know if I want to, you know, I don't know if I want to wear it right now for the next two or three weeks. I could throw it in the booth for like 50, 60 bucks and see what happens. And it's like my extra closet. It really is. So there's a lot of things that I do in my life where I put interesting things that I might be able to wear one day or get to, but I throw it right in the booth because if it does sell for 50 or 60 or even 40, like that's great. Like I just, you know, so anyway, that's the way I kind of look at it. Like it's a storage facility for me as well. Okay. What's up, Hikima? Good to see you. 64 viewers. Okay. It is cold in this garage. All right. What else did I get for 40 bucks? You know, this probably wasn't the best buy. It's Nike ACG uh, retro. I would not call it vintage and I would not call it antique. It's a retro um, ACG um, all conditions gear um, bag, right? Weather resistant bag. It probably is waterproof, but the fact that it has a huge flap right here, the water could get in right here and stuff, right? It's a messenger type bag, nothing crazy. And I don't think it's going to sell for very much. But I decided to throw it in there just in case I retrofit it to something, maybe for a bicycle or anything. And I trust me, like this wasn't a make it or break it kind of thing. This is kind of like I just threw it in and he's just like, I want my junk gone. So if, you know, the very last case scenario, I'll offer it to Emerson, my brother, or I'll just take it to a thrift store and donate it. But this was just part of it. So it is an ACG um, all weather kind of bag, but not waterproof. Okay. Very important. Resale on that. Honestly, like it might not be worth it, you know, considering the shipping or anything like I, at the end of that deal, I might make like five or seven bucks, which is kind of under my requirement to proceed with eBay on that item. This year, my requirement on eBay, like I'm doing a lot, not a lot of eBay, but my requirement is to make minimum like 30 bucks on the deal. So uh, last year it was like 20 and then the year before it was like 20 again. But this year, since my time's getting a little bit more valuable, like I'm moving it up to 30. I might even move it up, move it up to like 40 bucks, honestly, because um, you know, Green Room's doing a lot lately, and um, it's a lot of work, and we have a lot of big goals, especially with the uh, Green Room and my private label brand, that it's just one of those things, you know? Where do you invest your time? You don't get an infinite amount of time at all. So anyway, one of the things on the $40 haul was this. It's just an inbox TL100 Samsung camera. E-Money didn't even look it up or anything, but it had the cords, cables, everything, Samsung camera. Sitting right there, should boot up just fine. My guess is on FBA, this is like 50 to like 70 bucks. So that was just part of the deal right there. Nothing crazy, okay? And that's definitely nothing crazy. Part of the $40 deal as well was this Garmin. It says newly overhauled on the front here. So AKA, this is refurbished. Um, Forerunner 101 GPS. So this is a Forerunner 101. It looks like it goes on a wrist. Looks like it's mint. It looks super mint. Like, I don't see any sweat marks on this thing or nothing. Anyway, uh, more than likely wrist worn on this one. First time I'm really actually looking at it. It looks like it's in great condition. Got some bubble wrap. You even have the actual initial shipping label from what the person paid for this thing, I think. Um, somewhere around here, we got the, yeah, we got manuals. We got extra strap. I don't know if I'm missing anything. More than likely this thing, if it's a forerunner, there is a heart rate strap for around here so it can get your heart rate. Um... But anyway, it's a 4Runner 101, you know, I decided to pop on it because that could easily be um, one of those things that's first class rate, so no more for me. A first class at 16 ounces is no more than like 360, I think, or something like that. Um, first class rate, 16 ounces or below, um, Garmin thing. I might not even put the box involved. I'm mean, just trying to think here. The box. Yeah, it's definitely less than 16, so that's good. Um, and like I said, it could be incomplete. Definitely could be untested. It is untested, um, but you can still put it up there because if there's someone that's, you know, that has the heart rate monitor strap already, but they, they're missing this thing or there's like malfunction, then this could be worth 30 to 50 to somebody pretty quickly. So that's why we put it into the pile. Oh, this one's good. You guys ready for something really, really good? We've got 69 viewers in the house. Um, 
Jason Kreider's in the house. We got Chris Flores, Justin. What's up, guys? Wicked Picker, Pensacola. You know, I got 44 likes on this video and zero dislikes. That's actually kind of unprecedented because there's always, always usually some weirdo that comes in just to like dislike it and then jets. But um, if I could do my math right, we have 25 people that have not made the decision to hit the like button or the dislike button. So make a decision. That's all I'm asking you guys, right? Um, when it comes down to analytics at the very end, I take a look at the shows that have the most likes. And I know that that's pretty much the shows to keep doing. So if you like this type of format, you're learning some things, then definitely hit the like button. It's not very much to ask, guys, okay? Um, so thanks, Lance. I really appreciate it. What's up, Picking for Profit? <laughs> it's good to see you. We're going to have him on a Green Room show soon as well, probably in February. So Picking for Profit right there. He's in the Green Room as well. He hit me up the other day. He's like, I'd love to be on a show. And I'm like, hell, I would love to have you on a show. He does. He definitely does a lot more flea market type stuff, which is really interesting um, and has a good eye for older things. So that's great. Um, okay, so you guys ready for the really cool thing? I thought this was so good. In fact, I saw this on the initial Craigslist picture that led me to go to that sale. Okay, so let's backtrack a little bit. When I make my list, or not, sorry, let me, let's, yeah. So these uh, apps that I use, and everyone uses them, um, they run off Craigslist, okay? And the app being on your phone, okay? So I have an app on here called Yard Sale Treasure Map. It's probably the best app of all time. So to find garage sales, okay, nothing else. It's outside of garage sales, it doesn't, no one cares about it, right? But for garage sales, you want Yard Sale Treasure Map. So let me get into my iPhone. I'll show you that Yard Sale Treasure Map. You can see my iPhone right there. Yard Sale Treasure Map is just a little blue one that looks like a little, you probably won't see it. So I'm gonna hit it. We've got Yard Sale Treasure Map right there, and then you can see the town right there, okay? So right now it's cold as hell and there's like no garage sales, but these little red dots and everything mean a sale. So you can click on the red dots and it'll tell you stuff and it'll show you pictures. All this stuff is running off of Craigslist, okay? So when I looked at the garage sale that I was at yesterday, that was making my $40 pile on, those pictures I'd seen from Yard Sale Treasure Map on Friday night, okay? So I was scouting pictures and I was like, all right, that looks pretty good. Then I saw this picture and I was like, holy crap, like I really kind of want to see what this is all about. I really only saw the side of it, right? But I saw Dungeons and Dragons, because I just know that. Well, I saw Legend of Spelljammer, and I, and I kind of know what that is, but anyway, basically this is a retro D&D &D set. It feels really heavy, so that's good. I didn't go and check for completeness or anything while I was at the sale, but I'm doing it right now, and it looks pretty good. Like, basically it's a bunch of manual stuff, some maps. I like it. So, essentially I think this, I love the artwork on this too. It reminds me of like Never Ending Story, um, just almost like Aesop's Fables. Not Aesop's Fables, but uh, what's that one book series? C.S. Lewis. It, looks like, it reminds me of like C.S. Lewis type stuff, right? So there's Spelljammer right there for D&D. &D. Um, the Legend of Spelljammer, second edition. This could probably be 30 to 50, right? But that was one of the things that caught my eye. Because someone that picks this has a pretty decent eye. There's probably going to be some pretty good stuff at the sale, right? When you get into this kind of stuff or Warcraft stuff, I mean, or Warhammer, nerd, I call them nerd games, right? But they're considered R M M O R P G, I think, or something like that. No, no, just RPG. Sorry, not MMO. Sorry. RPG, role-playing games, right? Strategy-based role-playing games. I like what those people collect because they usually collect other things, figurines, Funko things, interesting things that have good resale. So I always try to land myself at those kind of sales to see what else I can find. But Spelljammer right here seems relatively intact, feels good. Um, has a lot of weight to it, right? If it was super light, then I'd be like, eh, maybe I'll just sell the box as is, because if someone's collecting, they want an awesome box, then that would matter. But this one feels nice and heavy, so there's probably a lot of content in there. And um, I'll get more into that later, but thinking 30 to 50 bucks on there. I think one sold for like 69 or 70 bucks, so that's not too bad. Could be a little bit more complete than that one. I'm not 100% sure. But like I said, I'm not worried about I'm not worried about little things like that. Like when I'm doing my picking and everything and I'm putting things in a bundle, like I just need to see a couple like super awesome winners. And trust me, we're coming to one of the winners right now. I just need to see a couple winners and I'm just going to put as much stuff in the pile as possible, right? Because if some of the stuff's not winners, I'm just going to donate it. It's not a huge deal to me. All right. So one of the things also that was 40 bucks sitting right here. Uh, this is a, what seems to be not refurbished, but brand new Nortel Networks um, phone right here. I mean, in the box, straight up, factory sealed, everything. We got the, uh, it's the IP phone 2002. Don't know if it's still used to this day, but typically phones like that have resell of somewhere between 40 and 100 bucks. That's my first guess right here. You know, TBD, a little bit more research needed, but that's what I'm thinking. So Nortel Networks phone right there. 
could be awesome. Don't know, but like I said, that's my picking style. I don't get caught up in the moment. I try to hit as much as I can so I can make good money. Um, picking for pride. We have the menta we have the same mentality when it comes to hustling for sure. That's what I'm saying. You know, a lot of people get caught up in like delving and searching through every little box and all that kind of stuff. I try to find big winners first, throw it in the pile, and then I try to find below the initial surface kind of winners, throw that in the pile. But when it comes to nitty gritty digging, you know, I sit there and I go, is it worth the next, you know, is it worth showing up to the next garage sales down my list 30 minutes later or, or an hour later because I'm going nitty gritty digging? And a lot of times it's not worth my time. But then again, I live in a town that has you know, a garage sale here that I might be in the car for another two minutes and there's another garage sale, sometimes less than two minutes. I realize that the strategy must change when you have bigger distances between your sales, right? Then you're sitting there going, okay, in the next hour I can crush, let's say two or three more sales in some of these other towns in America, um, but I'm here and I can do like super digging into this box or these boxes that I see what's worth my time. Now, if you're already winning in the present scenario and you start seeing good things, you might be able to positively conclude that searching deeper into those type of sales will give you a little bit more profit. But if you're in a case like mine, where my entire town is pretty good and they have good stuff, then I sit there and I go, okay, you know, sale number, I could see five to 10 more sales in the next hour. Is it worth me digging deeper? Does that make sense? I hope it does. So anyway, um, Bearded Picker says a new Nortel P IP 2002 sold 60 on eBay. Thank you so much, Bearded Picker. So I, I guess I was really, you know, on the money on that. 40 to 100 bucks is what I kind of said. So there we go. FBA 80 bucks on the phone. Outdoor Wrangler, thank you so much. Okay. So you guys ready to see the winners? Well, I'll show you. This is not even a winner, but this was just part of the deal. A Sector 9 longboard, used condition, but not cracked or anything like that. The maple's all intact. It's probably a seven ply board. Seven plies of maple, um, normal Mission One trucks, an entry level Sector 9 board, local sale, probably somewhere between 30 and 40 bucks. Nothing more than that. That's nothing to be proud about right there. But that was just part of the deal. And uh, if you're wondering, like, why don't you use it bona fides? Because I also have like 10 long boards. So, and they're all like infinitely better than that one. So I don't need it. Um, what else? Okay, here's the big winner. You guys ready for the big winner? Uh, two big winners. You guys ready? Who's ready for the two big winners? I want to know. Very, very important. By the way, I have 71 viewers watching. I'm going to take this opportunity. If you like this type of like video and you want to learn more one-off kind of things to score well on a garage sales, because honestly, guys, we're we're on the brink of the best season ever, man. People are clearing out their houses. You know, a lot of times when the American economy is doing really well, they spend a lot of money, right? They spend a lot of money in October to December. Um, discretionary income is at all-time high, so people are spending all this money. But the houses typically stay the same. So what happens is you're putting more stuff into a house that already has a lot of stuff in it, right? Where the the, the Western race, or should I say the American race, we're very big on stuff. Like it's just the way it is. Bigger and better always wins. This is the way you know the USA is. So when you put more stuff into the house and the house hasn't grown, but you're putting more stuff into it, then that means that the season, like the 2017 season, is probably gonna be really, really good for garage sales, estate sales, that kind of stuff. Because when you push new things in, old stuff has to come out. And a lot of times, you know, if you're if you know how to pick well, if you're in good towns and you know the neighborhoods real well, that old stuff that has to be pushed out might be really high quality and likely to be really high quality goods. It's just the way it is. So we're coming upon a really good season in 2017 for garage sales. Okay. So while I have you guys here, I want you to get more, I almost lost this thing, more education by getting this guide right here, okay? It does put you on our email list, which has a crazy amount of content, and it, does, it definitely gives you heads up on all the Wednesday Green Room shows. But uh, 100 Amazing Items to Resell was once a guide that we were charging a decent amount of money for about a year and a half ago. But now it is free. Look down below, first link, 100 Amazing Items to Resell. A great guide, trust me. I, I was in charge of putting a quarter of these items up here and these are readily available and really good items to find. So if you're enjoying this type of content and you want to learn about more stuff, this is the guide right here, okay? You can get it for free down below, instantly to your phone in PDF form. Okay, Brandon English says, I have a good feeling about 2017. I 100% have the exact same feeling. Um, all right, thumbs up from Iowa. Thank you, Nathan. I appreciate that. <laughs> Pensacola Picker says, they got new stuff for Christmas selling old stuff. So. Yeah, Lauren, I'm with you too. I can't wait till garage sale season again. That's right. Okay, so let's get for the big 
Oh, here's okay. Sorry, I'm almost there. I'm almost at the big winners. Okay, I just found something else. This leather hat was part of the deal. It's an all leather hat from Argentina. It says Sam Sombreros Sombreros Pampa from Argentina. Okay, so this is just a normal leather hat, a little bit Indiana Jones style, definitely small. So um, E Money didn't want it. I didn't want it, but it's uh, it's a medium, all leather, indie, right? Indiana Jones style. That probably that could be even one of the uh, keywords I use. I'll look this up, but you would think that all other hats have like insane values and, you know, especially the ones from Australia, whatever. But, uh, you know, a lot of them shake out somewhere between that 30 and 50 range, honestly. So that's not a whole lot of insane value, but uh, still pretty nice. Not too bad. So I might see if I can, I might see if I can eke out 30 to 40 on this, but I doubt it. So I'll just put it in my booth. It isn't retro vintage or um, antique. But it's tarnished and definitely odd. You know, it's not something you really see every day. So I'll probably put it in the booth if I cannot get my minimum of 30 in eBay. So um, you're welcome, Nicholas. There's, an, there's a great, great comment from Nicholas. So you're welcome. Okay. So you guys ready for the big one? Here we go. Two big, 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 awesome finds. I like them a lot. So here's the first one, okay? Dun, dun, dun. This is one of the first things I put into the pile right here. I like it. Logo Athletic Vintage Dallas Cowboys. Very nice extra large jacket. No rips, no tears, no holes, no funky odors. That was a good one, okay? So this one right here, um, I'm going to estimate somewhere around, I don't know, this could be 60 to, 60 to like one... 20. That's just my first guess. Okay, 60 to 120. There are a lot sold right now. Cowboys are doing really well this season. So, you know, I would definitely want to get this speed. The market's very crucial in this scenario. Okay. And I actually sold two Dallas Cowboys satin jackets um, not too long ago, like uh, two months ago. Beautiful jackets. I paid five for each of them. One sold for, I think, almost 100. The other one sold for 50. So one was a chalk line, the other one was an actual true starter. Satin jacket, so nice. I mean, so nice. Like, I'm surprised I didn't keep it, but then again, you know, am I going to buy that jacket for 100 bucks? That's the thought process that Bonafide is going through all the time now. And the question and the answer is no. I'm just not going to spend 100 bucks on that. So Cowboys jacket right there. Nice nylon jacket. Love it. Really, really nice score right there. What do you guys think right there? I know it's what, that's what I'm saying, man. So this, this is a quick flip type thing while they're still in the playoffs, hopefully. Um, that thing needs to be listed immediately. So Lance says, I first thought 80, buy it now. We'll see. I'm probably going to do, honestly, something like absurd with a, or best offer, have my store on sale, and see what comes through. Usually that's the best way to approach it because that way you maximize yourself in the algorithm um, when you have the jacket. So, Okay. Um, you ready for the really good one? Here comes the really, really good score. This one's awesome. This was the very first thing I picked up. Okay, the very first thing. I like it. This is going to my booth right now, today. Okay? So this is not a tweed or I guess it's, it's not tweed, but it's definitely a different. It's a belted suitcase made by Lincoln, New York. It's got that awesome look. Now, people buy this stuff not to go traveling in. They don't care about looking like Romance in the Stone or anything like that, like those movies like Jewel of the Nile. They don't care about that. This is not going to find its way to Cartagena. You know, if you got the joke, let me know. Um, but this is not going to uh, be that kind of thing. This is probably going to find its place in a farmer's market, more than likely, or a decoration for a house or something like that. But more or less, it's going to find, my, my guess is it finds itself in, it's going to be retrofitted. It's going to find itself at a farmer's market where people just prop it up and they have all their little earrings holding right there, um, maybe pegboard or something on there. And it's going to have that interesting, like artistic, artistic type, um, almost hipster type background to it when people have, and in Austin, Texas, it's notorious that people buy cases like this or tweed suitcases or old Skyway suitcases for trade show type things or flea market type things or pop-up shop kind of things. So this is a nice big one. Okay? This is definitely on the bigger side. Um, it's awesome. There's no key, of course. And you're never going to find these with a key. Some of them might have rotating scrolling locks um, like Hartman, vintage Hartman suitcases. But this one right here is in nice condition. I forget what this is called again. It could be dipped canvas or dipped, I 
think it could be dip canvas. I'm not 100% sure. But anyway, miss what? how much for this? I'm going to put it in my booth right now. I have a 30% off sale going on in my booth right now. I'm going to probably, my first entry price on this is going to be about 120 So 120 minus 30%, is 36 bucks off that, $84. So 84 bucks, then they take a 10% cut, $8.40. You kind of see what my brain's thinking right now. I'll walk away with you know a pretty good amount of money. Or I might put it a little bit higher, you know, maybe like 150, 30% off sale, 105, and then 10% off of that, which is $10.50. And that's kind of what I'm thinking. I, I might do the 150 first for a week and see what happens. Just remember, it's part of the $40 lot. I'm pretty much nothing into this thing. So, you know, it, it's it's all win at this point. All win. And by the way, if you did see a garage sale video on my channel in the past month where I picked up a big um I think I already edited this video, but I pick up a big map. Actually, I didn't edit this video yet. It's still on my, uh, you'll see. Anyway, it already sold in the booth for 81 bucks, um, or it sold for a good amount plus, I think it sold for 100, something like that. Anyway, I walked with $81 on this big map that you're gonna see in a video soon. Um, and we put it in eMoney's truck bed and it took up the entire truck bed, but uh, that one already sold. So anyway, <clears throat> 75 viewers, what's up? 79 upvotes, one down vote. I told you there's always going to be one person that doesn't care. Um, it's good to see you guys. Okay, let's go into other funds. Gosh, it was a really good day yesterday. And I got to tell you that there were only like five sales. It was very bleak, right? But I still got up, 18 degree weather. I don't care. I didn't film too bad, but um, I still got up and it was a lot of fun. I, it's fun for two reasons. One, I get to spend time with my brother, which is very important. Um, we're both busy people. Um, and the second reason is I really love still doing garage sales. I like it a lot. It's fun. It's just a fun hunt. And you do end up finding good things for yourself um, through garage sales. So, all right. So then we went to like thrift store mode for a little bit. God, these boxes are getting huge. Okay. Bear with me, guys. Bear with me. Um, we went to a Savers, a Goodwill. So I think this is from the first Savers. I'll just say it like that. Okay, so from the first savers, E-Money picked up this, and he's really big into messing with these guitars. He has the exact boxes needed for these. Some do break apart. Uh, these both will be break aparts, so like they can break in the middle right here. Now, <clears throat> these carry great value. In fact, E-Money spent up for this one. He spent eight bucks on this one. You might be thinking, that's crazy, eight bucks. But when you pair it up with the correct game, um, you know, he can sell it on FBA for around 80 to 90 something dollars, something like that. He knows these like really well. In fact, he ships off on average about 15 every three weeks, something like that. So this one he spent $7 on. And um, this is the Sunburst uh, Guitar Hero 361 or something like that. Uh, wireless controller, Xbox 360, Red Octane. Um, there's a certain game that goes with this one. I don't know if it's World Tour, but uh, he knows the whole thing behind this. I believe this is the one that's like 80. This is the one that's right around 60 after fees when he does the whole deal, something like that. So it's a, he knows it real well, but he picked it up from Savers. Um, along with that, he's getting kind of bigger into scanning a lot of CDs. In fact, that's one of the very first things he does when he goes into thrift stores is he lines up all the CDs that are in plastic, okay? He lines them all up, and then, um, well, he doesn't line them all up. He takes them, oh, Soldier Boy's in here. Look at that. Okay. Um, so he pulls them all out, right? Then he puts them in a stack, and then he puts one. St he puts a stack on, like, one side of the rack, and then he just sits there, and he just takes one, flips it over, scans it with his phone, and then he puts it into another stack. The other stack might be a buy stack or, um, a buy, you know, put it back into the, uh, you know, trash stack. Like, I don't want it kind of stack. So we got Soldier Boy right here. All these he um, scanned. The highest probably bring, I think, somewhere around 15 bucks. Each CD right here is no more than two bucks. So, and he doesn't go over, I think, 100 can rank or something like that. So, it's an easy way to make an extra, you know, whatever out of this. After fees, we got one, two, three, four, five, six CDs. Assuming he makes, let's just be generous and say he makes seven to eight on each, which, if you're investing two bucks and you can multiply your two into, um, <clears throat> you know, if you can multiply your two into seven or eight dollars, um, within a month or two, that's no different than investing in a stock that's two dollars and then selling it for seven or eight two months later. It's the same thing. So essentially, that's the way we kind of look at it, or he looks like at it is it's essentially like stock trading, except you're buying stuff with dedicated like ranks where you know as long as the thing's not cracked, 
it doesn't have any drill marks in it, right? So that's kind of common. You got to look at the cases, make sure they're all good. They don't have drill marks in them. They don't have cracks in them, but these are all mint. They're all sealed. So rate of return, very super, super low on this. Um, and treat it like stocks. I mean, it's just like, you know, it's like its own commodity, really, you know, except this time you're not wondering if the company is going to do really well. You're not praying. Amazon has ranks, right? And ranks dictate how often it sells and how fast it can sell. So that's really important. It's a good edge to have, especially when you're scanning. It's the only edge you have when you're scanning. It's the only edge. So that's what makes it really fun. So he lines up all the CDs, just like I said, he takes them all down. And out of 20 wrapped CDs, he's, at, he's ending up with about six right here. So not too bad. Those are his. Um, yeah, he goes 100K. So Justin Lasper says 100K rank. That's the that's the highest he goes on CDs. He doesn't, he doesn't go, I think, over 100K, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, so Illini Picker says, hey, Chris, can you touch on the standpoint of free shipping versus charging? Um, free shipping gets you also like higher in the, if I'm not mistaken, it gets you higher up in the algorithm on eBay. So you want to do free shipping. I always do free shipping. I've been doing free shipping for half a decade now, right? Um, I always do free shipping. It's less headache for me. I build in the price. I build in my shipping price essentially into the um, price of the item. I also engage with GSP, which is a global shipping program, something like that. Um, so it pretty much has all that lined up for me. So I'm, I'm, I'm basically eBay is going to be a glorified hobby for me in 2017. When, when I say glorified, I really wanted to bring somewhere in into my life somewhere between two and four thousand dollars a month like that's just my goal with ebay um because for the limited amount of time that i'm spending on it which hopefully everything goes right it should be 10 10 hours a week or less that's really what i want to you know eke out so i'm paying attention to a couple things one is how to maximize the algorithm which is really important um which we know how to do in the green room which we have a course in the green room which is boost your ebay so that's really important how to maximize the algorithm because it's not so much about whether you offer free shipping or any of this kind of stuff it's really about whether you have a lot of things in conjunction that maximize yourself in the algorithm so when someone types in um for example uh anything right anything into ebay it could be flying it nike air flying it you know men's size 10 then if you have all these things lined up you're going to rise higher in the algorithm and be seen quicker because no one cares about page four, page five. Really, no one cares about page three. But if you're on page one or page two, then you'll probably get seen. So it's all about getting seen, like right keywords, all this kind of stuff. There's a lot of things that have to come together um, to rank yourself higher in the eBay algorithm. All this stuff, by the way, confirmed by an actual eBay representative, which I was the person on that task. And I stayed on the phone with them for a very long time to understand the algorithm, kind of how it works and how I could maximize um, you know, myself in eBay. So with all that kind of stuff, and what we presently already knew, we combined it, made a very short micro course, and it's in the green room right now. It's on the site, actually, but you have to be a member to look at it. So, but essentially, free shipping is definitely one of those things, very important. Um, another one of those things that you want is, you, want, you definitely want to maximize your reseller status or um, your resale status when it comes to eBay. So you want to be power seller, TRS, or, you know, there's all these kind of things that you have to line up. Um, usually it's like one day handling, offer 30 day returns, um, and a couple other things. But even then, if you do that, it does maximize you a little bit in the algorithm, but you still have to get your keywords right and a bunch of other stuff. So there's a lot of things that matter in eBay. Trust me, a lot. And most people think it's just, you know, okay, I'm going to take five pictures and write something cool out. It's not It's not that. It's, it's, it's a lot of things coming together. It's at least seven to ten different things that you can do to come together to rise and be on page one. So something like that. So anyway, um, Let's see what else I got. Then we went to a Goodwill. At the Goodwill, I popped on this. There was no price on it. She sold it to me for two bucks. After fees is going to yield me, I think, eight or ten on FBA. Thirty k rank in toys, like nothing crazy, like. But still, I look at it like a stock. It's like a tiny little stock. Forget it. Like, I put one sticker on it, you know, and I can get six to eight bucks away from it. You know, I can get six to eight bucks from it. I'll I definitely do it all the time. Um, probably more for personal use for me or my wife, but this is a buff headwear band. So essentially buff, what it is, is they make UV buff, which is good for sunlight protection. Um, these are things that go around your neck. It's like a, a neck kind of thing, or you can bring it up. If you're tra traversing across a desert, a place with blowing sand, you can bring it up and it protects, you know, the sand from going into your mouth or your nose. You can bring you can put it on your head to catch sweat. Um, you can do a lot of things. So right here we have a dude that has it on his head, like right here. 
There's like six ways you can run this, uh, wear this thing. I think actually more, but anyway, six ways, dedicated ways. You can wear it on your head like a bandana. You can wear it around here to, um, like if you're, let's say you're biking across the USA and you don't want the sun to like hit your neck, um, you definitely have a very long sleeve shirt on, you know, something that protects your UV rays from hitting your body right here, but you don't, you're missing this one section so you can use one of these. Um, this is a headband for a girl for like, to look really good on a festival, it looks like. She's wearing it right here. Like a headband. Uh, we have the mouth part where it protects your mouth from like inhaling dust and particles. So if you're at a dusty concert or something like that, or maybe even a racing event, which has a lot of dust, you know, monster truck kind of stuff, you could put it up like that. We have a do-rag, um, more like survivor style, top of your head. And then there's another one back there too. So this can do a lot of stuff. They make UV, UV buffs. This is the company, right? Buff. So they make a UV buff. They make a polar buff, right? Which is more like a flip piece of polar fleece that can do this all. They make a wool one, which is for warmth. Um, the polar fleece is more like you can breathe through it. Um, they have windproof buffs as well, which I have some of those. These are really, really handy things to have, trust me. When you're active and you're doing a lot of things outside, it's basically multifunctional headwear. So really good stuff. And some of these buffs, like the wool buff, will be like 40 to 50 bucks for a wool buff. A polar buff, somewhere between 30 and 40 bucks. They come in various different colors, and the color dictates the price as well. So the more standard type colors, a little bit lower, but the nicer type of artwork will be a little higher. I know a lot about this stuff. It's clear. But anyway, I do own some of it. So probably going to keep it because it's, you know, for $5.99, usually these things are 25 bucks at the stores. <sighs> All right. Um, 83 viewers in the house. Thank you. Um, okay, so another find from the Goodwill. We're getting very close to the end of the show here. Then I could get to go to the antique booth. Uh, this right here, imagine if you even had a clearance target tag. I found this at a Goodwill for $4 out the door, sealed, looked great, um, selling for 25 or so, yielding me a profit of like 16 So I'm going to multiply my $4 into 16 bucks. I'll do it all day. Great rank too, so not, nothing crazy. Um, and then the last thing, which was a really good score, I'm looking around and making sure I don't, I don't forget to show you and teach you guys something. Um, the last score of the day, and this is probably one of the better ones, this could probably sell for some, somewhere between 60 and 100 bucks. A brand new pair of Castelli. It's a very, very good brand, okay? Castelli. And they typically have a scorpion as the logo. So it's like a scorpion with his tail kind of hooking. Um, here we go. There it is. See? Like that. All right, so Castelli is really, really, uh, it's up there with Capo, it's up there with Rapa, R A P H A, Capo, C A P O cycling type uh, jersey wear or warming up for a race kind of wear which is this this is a warm-up suit right endorsed with nb new balance on there so i'll have to disclose that because i don't think that's supposed to be there doesn't really matter because it's brand new it's got tags it's a medium which is like uh, perfect size right so the tags are right there that was the biggest thing about it if it didn't have tags i probably wouldn't have bought it but i spent um nine dollars out the door for this i'm gonna try to multiply it into 60 or 100 bucks um right there so it's good like i said it's a track day suit right you show up in this kind of thing like just like you know u.s gymnasts at the olympics do they show up in these track type suits um this is just a part of the thing to keep you warm that's all it is and underneath this you have your bibs on you have your tight little bike shorts and uh it's just a warm-up kind of thing because cyclists warm up at a meet um usually take their bikes and they put it in a very kind of like low climbing gear kind of thing. They get on a level surface where they bring a trainer with them, which is one of the things that suspends the rear wheel off the ground. And they sit there and they spin to get the blood into the you know leg region of the body. So uh, a lot of times if it's too cold, they'll have this and I'll just do the whole thing, you know, the routine with this on. Um, but anyway, this is very important. It's Castelli, okay? So if you want to, uh, two other brands that are really good, um, Capo is really good, C-A-P-O, straight from Italy. Um, I believe Castelli is Italy too. Let me just take a look real quick. A lot of the good stuff comes from Italy. If you do deal with anything, uh, this is not Italy. This is China, but still, like Castelli is just up there. It's definitely up there. Um, and the other one that you want to check out is Rapa, R A P H A. Really good stuff. If you're lucky enough to find Mellow Johnny stuff in your town, too, which is Lance Armstrong's kind of brand, um, there's only one Mellow Johnny store in the entire USA that I know of, and it's in Austin, Texas. And those things, those jerseys, those bibs, those shorts, all that kind of stuff, that's Mellow Johnny is really expensive like it's it just carries great resale value so it's not uncommon to go into the mellow johnny store see an average looking kind of cycling um jersey 
and it'd be like a hundred bucks. I'm not even kidding. Like a hundred dollars with just a mellow Johnny logo right here. It's ridiculous. But you know, when you build up that, that name for yourself um, and believe it or not, people still, I think in Austin have forgave him for the whole doping thing. And that store does crazy business. So, okay. Um, 78 viewers in the house. I think that does the show. Like I said, guys, if you enjoy the content, most important thing you can do is hit the like button. Okay, it's so important. You can leave me a comment as well, and I'll, you know, likely I read all the comments, but I definitely look at all the like button stuff. If you want more things to learn, if you're like, oh man, I really learned a lot. That was fun. Get this guide. It's down below. It's like the first link. Okay, 100 amazing items to resell. There's just tons of items in there, readily available type garage sale, thrift store type items that you can make money on. I challenge you to not make money and have this guy to know the whole thing. It's got, it's, it's literally impossible. Like this guy has secrets. So that's pretty much it guys. Thanks a lot. I hope you enjoyed the haul. Um, yeah, it, it was just a fun haul. I definitely want to you know make more like this, but you gotta let me know through the like button or through the feed if you liked it a lot. So thanks a lot. I gotta get out of here. I gotta go to the booth and I get some stuff done, take some pictures for eBay. But uh, I enjoyed spending an hour with you guys. Take it easy. Goodbye.